I'm Scott McGowan. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. Now, I think even for our listeners, too, I think what's important is um, we might be right, we might be wrong, but one thing is, is we're not afraid. Right. And we have a point of view, and I think that people should hear it. And we're unscripted. We just have free reign for 20 minutes. Welcome to Side Effects with an egg. Welcome to Side Effects. I'm Scott McGowan. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. And we've got a guest with us today. Eric, you've been here before. Yes, I Welcome have. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Yeah, thanks for being here. We're very excited about our topic today. Yes, me, me too. We're going to see how this goes. Well, Spread I, pricing, right? Well, I think so. <laughs> and I think, you know, for our audience, whether you're an employer or you're a consumer, I think what's important to understand is this is a really complicated transaction, quite yes. frankly, and it doesn't have to be that complicated, but it is. But yes. it is. Definitely. And so today we're going to focus specifically on spread pricing. So just one small element in the pharmacy piece that Eric's going to walk us through. Yeah. And, and we'll, uh, we'll continue. Matter of fact, Eric's agreed to be a guest um, several times. Uh, <laughs> and we'll continue to unpack this transaction. And we've had pa past episodes as well. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I really appreciated about, you know, why you wanted to come here today was the fact that um, you kind of, you kind of put this in, you, you painted a different picture. Yeah. Hopefully to help an employer understand. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe even a consumer understand. Well, I think that the thing with, with this and, uh, you know, nowadays, you know, this time of year, we all go to these holiday parties and everything. And let me tell you, there's no faster way to clear a room than when someone asks me, you know, what do you do for a living? And well, there's this thing called spread pricing. And then I start to try to talk about it. And, and everybody, you know, the eyes glaze over, they're looking for where, where can I get my next drink, so on and so forth, and, uh, and they're gone. So, so I realized that, that I had a problem because um, you know, our goal at 46 Brooklyn is to try to explain this for people to understand. And to a large extent, like I'm just, I'm just trying to iterate my way there. Like, how, what's the next way that I can, whatever analogy I have to pull out, or whatever I can do in order to try to get this to sink home. So, so today I'm pretty excited that you've invited me here. Um, we're gonna try something completely different, completely new. I haven't done this before, so listeners, uh, this is the first time that, that we're trying to actually use this with a completely new analogy. <laughs> well, and I, I also for our listeners, if you're listening um, uh, and you're not watching this, yeah, uh, we also we're gonna um, kind of unpack a slide deck. So if you're interested in getting that material, you can email Scott at healthierbirthdays.com or Ann at healthierbirthdays.com and we'll get you a copy of this slide deck. If you're watching and you want a copy, just reach out yep. and we'll get you a copy. Yep, okay, want me to kick well, it yeah, ready to go? You. Yes. All right, so um, title of this is, uh, is why, what is spread pricing and why should you care? Uh, you really only need to see one slide if you're looking at it here. Uh, why should you care? Because this is $208 million in spread that was taken off of generic drugs over one 12 month period here. Um, 31 percent. So, I mean, let's put that in perspective. So, you know, when you uh, use a credit card, um, uh, there, there's a transaction fee, of course, right? Uh, that transaction fee, when you're, people typically talk about it in basis points, which is a percentage of a percent. <laughs> so there's less than 1% that, that uh, you know, the, the middle of that transaction is, is taking off of that. Uh, in this case, the, the auditor of the state after spending a lot of time adding up, you know, the, the gap between what the pharmacy actually received and what the state actually paid, they added, added them all up and got to a 31% fee in the middle. So that might be what goes under the counter, not over the counter. Fair? Yeah, it's, I, I think that's a fair way of putting it. It's, it's really what the, the, um, the, the middlemen are taking to facilitate that transaction. Right, and so, it's not really transparent. You don't really no. sign up for that and say, yes, we agree to pay you 31% to process no. this. You don't really know what you signed up for. No, and in fact, the, the state had no idea until they did this audit, and, and it took a lot of work for the auditor to even get this data. So, so that, that's why you should care, I think, over in one slide, yeah. right? And I think so. our <laughs> listeners are thinking, why did they pay that much? What's wrong with the state, mm -hmm. right? What's wrong with their oversight? And that's what yeah. you're going to help us understand. That, that, that's that right. They didn't make that willing choice. Well, so, and, and the next question really is, is like, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. And and I think that, uh, you know, in as a summary, it's just the, the difference between two completely different contracts. 
And that's where I tend to lose people. That's where mm -hmm. like the room clears and everything. So so we're gonna we're gonna take and you're a different all by yourself, here. Just talking I'm all about, by myself, just yeah. talking to the there wall, or, or or God bless God bless my wife. Mm -hmm. yeah. She'll <laughs> she'll stick around and listen to the story over and over again. So so that's where we're going to talk about something completely different, and then kind of wrap our way back around. So drug pricing is too complicated. Let's go grocery shopping instead. We clearly all know and have interacted with like the, the grocery transactions before. So in this case, um, if you're not looking at the slide. Uh, this is a relatively simple kind of grocery cart that you have put together. You're going to buy some bananas, some apples, some Cheerios, some salmon, Pepsi, wine, so on and so forth. Um, each product, you probably are pretty familiar with what the price of that product should be. So your bananas, let's say they're 20 cents per banana. You want to buy six of them, so that gets you to $1.20. That's all this slide says. It's here's what's in your cart. Here's the total market price per unit, mm -hmm. the total number of units. You multiply them together. You get the total. You add it all up. And so this basket is $48.29. Excuse me. And that's, that's about how complicated grocery shopping is. If you don't like the price that you're going to get wherever you are, you go somewhere else. You go online to Amazon Fresh or whatever you want. There's right. tremendous amounts of competition. And you get to choose what you put in that basket. And, and, if you, and you get to choose to take it out yeah. if, yeah. if you don't that's like fair. the price of it, right? right? Or if you don't like the, uh, um, the seltzer water, that's 35 cents per can, you probably can go get the private label one for mm -hmm. 20 cents a can if you want. Right. So there's lots of options that you have. Um, I'm a big sci-fi fan. It's a little known fact here. And uh, so, so I'm going to create an alternate universe now that we're going to kind of, you know, transition down. What if we bought our groceries like we buy our drugs? And so in this case, it wouldn't just be you and your grocer anymore like it is today. You would have to involve a couple other parties. So you'd have to bring your employer into that transaction. And you'd also have to bring something I'm going to make up called your grocery benefit manager instead of pharmacy benefit manager, your GBM. So this is how that transaction works. So you are going to give your grocer some amount of money for your groceries. But the problem is, is not all of that money is going to the grocer anymore. Now you're giving some money to your employer as well, right? Because that's your premium. So your grocer only gets that copay, or coinsurance, whatever that is. You have to figure out where you are in your deductible before you decide if you want to buy the expensive almonds or not. Um, so that money goes to the employer and you're paying some amount into your premium, depending on what sort of insurance plan they have for your groceries. They have entered into a contract with your grocery benefit manager to make this all simpler for them. Uh, and that's the, this little kind of icon that I have. Like they pay the money, they get a contract back, and then your grocery benefit manager has entered into a contract with your grocer. And that's how this whole thing works now. So it, it, we took something that was pretty simple and we've made it a lot less simple. And so by this point in time, you may be getting sort of confused or curious. So now I was actually thinking about bringing in a slide with, um, you know, a big fan of the Matrix. So you bring in a slide with Morpheus. Do you want to take the red pill? Do you want to take the blue pill? Let's assume we're going to take the red pill and we're going to go down this rabbit hole and see how far this actually takes us. So we pop the red pill in. And then we've come up with, we've arrived at our first truth of what's mm -hmm. really going on within this new grocery system that we've, that we've cooked up. Um, that the price of any product is based on a discount off of a new benchmark price. This is nothing that you actually see called average wholesale price. And so I'm going to use this term a lot, so I'm just going to abbreviate it to AWP. So in this case, you still have your bananas, you still have your apples, you still have your Cheerios, so on and so forth, but there's a new price for that, for all those different products. And you're going to pay, it doesn't really matter, you may have entered into an agreement to pay a 78% discount. You may have entered an agreement to pay 80, maybe 82, whatever it is. The problem is, is you need to know what that price is. What the starting point is. Yeah, exactly. Right. Let me tell you, I'm trying to get access to that. Um, 46 Brooklyn, we work off of no funding at this point in time. It costs anywhere between 15 to $20,000 within the drug pricing world to get live access to, to these numbers. So it's not easy nor transparent in order to actually figure out what this number is. But you're continuing to go down this rabbit hole, right? So now we're going to go and you, you've, you've dedicated your fifteen dollars to $20,000 to figure out this answer. <laughs> and so you plow along and then you figure out that AWP, truth number two, has no relationship to market-based pricing for generic drugs, or in this case, groceries. Right. Um, so this is a, what we're looking at. If, you, if you're seeing the slides right now is you're looking at a scatter plot. 
for the top 50 Medicaid generic drugs, the average wholesale price versus what's called NADAC, which this is National Average Drug Acquisition Cost. This is the best public free benchmark price that we actually have that represents true pharmacy invoice cost. So this is as good as we get when it comes to market price, price yeah. the price that you see on the counter at the grocery store, so on and so forth. And what you'll see here is a mess. There's no relationship between these two numbers. In fact, if you want to apply some statistics to it, the R squared is 0 0.26. That just means there's no correlation, statistically speaking, between these numbers. Let's pull up a couple of um, pull up a couple of examples here. So here, the AWP of this one drug is fifteen dollars and twenty cents. The NADAC is six forty. Mm -hmm. You're probably pretty happy about this one if you're an employer because an 80% discount to 1520 is less than 640. So if you buy a lot of that, let's assume these are the almonds or whatever, then you may actually be getting a good deal within a model like this. Here's one where the AWP is $2.34 and the NADAC is two cents. That's different. Hopefully you don't buy a lot of that. Um, here's one where it's 22.47 and the NADAC is 28 mm -hmm. cents. So massive, massive differential between these drugs. And, and so that, that's the issue that we have, is that there's just really no relationship between these. So you know truth number one, and you know truth number two. You figured those out, and now the time has come for us to do some math. So we have our initial grocery list here. It all adds up to the $48.29 that's in your grocery cart. You've gone and you've paid the money to actually get the AWPs for these groceries. Okay. Keep in mind these were made up. <laughs> for these, right. this, is, this is for illustration purposes only. But we've already proven that within the drug world that the AWP has no relation to the market price. So I, I just basically came up with numbers that have absolutely no relation here. So bananas are $4 per banana. Apples are $3. Cheerios are $17 a box. Salmon is $47 a pound. Again, absolutely just out, out of this world type numbers right. that, that we're seeing here. You apply your discount to it. And then you get to the, this total price that you're paying, which if you add everything up, as you'll see on this slide, is $76. So the groceries cost this in this plan, in our alternate universe. Your grocer actually gets only that $48.29 because it, it, there, there's nothing saying that your grocery benefit manager has, has to actually pay out that inflated number. And then the grocery benefit manager gets $27.71 in spread, the difference between those two numbers. This is exactly how spread works mm -hmm. within prescription drugs. I think what's interesting in looking at this too is I like if I used a credit card at a grocery store, mm -hmm. and if you think of your credit card like a PBM, yep. Historically, what will happen? So if I shop at uh, at, a, at a grocery store and I use a Visa, mm -hmm. and it's forty eight dollars and twenty nine cents. Yep. The grocer pays the transaction, whether it be 2% or 3%, right? Yeah. The grocer pays for that. Mm -hmm. I pay 48.29. That's right. The convenience factor is a relationship between the credit card company and the retailer. Yeah. Right? But the consumer is insulated from that. That's right. And gets to pay that price. Yeah. Right. The, the frustrating part is I pay $76, and I figured out that Visa got 27.71 of a trans transaction yeah. was 48. Yeah, and, and there is no way that pretty much you can figure this yeah. out. Like if you're the customer, right. in, in, our, in our parallel universe, we're just sitting here thinking that groceries cost $76. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we don't know what, what the, the grocer is actually And don't you think them. in that complexity that just being intentional about making it that complicated is unfortunately just on purpose? I, I, I can't come up with any other reason, mm -hmm. you know? I, I mean, I, I don't see the, the need for, like, I mean, how is this helping with better patient access? How is this, um, how is this, this helping save payers money? Um, not relative to what they paid last year based on the same exact model, relative to kind of if you just built this, if you just whiteboarded the system. I, I mean, look, I've, I've been trying to figure that mm -hmm. out. And, and I can't come up with a good answer to what the purpose of this is. Yeah. So. There's a lot of new entrants in the market. Mm -hmm. that are trying to yeah. make a make a, their entrance in here with a complete pass through or complete transparency but yeah. they're just tiny fractions they are. of what's happening in the marketplace so the market in general yes. is controlled by this type of pricing today yeah. off of AWP it's called a traditional model there's right. a reason why <laughs> right yeah. so um there are a couple of learnings before we go into the third truth that we'll figure out i, I want to take pause here and go over a, a couple learnings for the first two truths. So the system is extremely complicated, which Scott, you talked to. 
But it's not necessarily a bad deal. Like, it, I mean, it really isn't. It, it completely depends on what's on your grocery list. So going back to our almonds example, if all you buy is almonds and that's it, you may, you may actually really like this model. It may work out for you as a customer. But the problem is, is you've got to do a lot of math to figure out if you're getting a good deal or not. And if you're an employer out there and you're not doing that math or you haven't hired somebody to do that math that you trust is doing that math for your best interest, right. then more than likely what you've done is just shifted the power in the, uh, over to the, your, your PBM, or in this case your, your grocery benefit manager, because they own all of the information and they're able to manipulate all those variables to their best interest. Right. Um, the other thing that I wanted to take away, uh, a key takeaway here is that that, that GBM, as, as I already spoke to, doesn't necessarily have to pay out the market rate. So they don't have to pay out what you're paying to their grocer. They don't necessarily have to pay out the market rate either to the grocer. So in many cases and within the pharmacy space, um, they can underpay. And there's really no, this is what a lot of pharmacies have been complaining about, there's no mechanism for the pharmacy to actually challenge that to say that I lost a tremendous amount of money right. on the bananas or on the almonds or on the seltzer water, so on and so forth. Um, and then the transitioning us to this third truth, this is the part that where it all breaks down for me. If AWP, this average wholesale price, right. actually tracked and trended with the market price, then you could hire a bunch of data analytics consultants and they could come in and they could say, yes, ex I know exactly what our mix is gonna be. I know exactly what I'm gonna put in that grocery cart next year. And I can tell you for sure that we should go with this model and it's gonna work out really well for us. But what happens if AWP has, does not trend or does not move with the changes in the market prices going forward? Right. Well, now all of a sudden you could be doing all this math, but it's all backwards looking and going forward, you could end up being in a bad deal and not even know about it. Right. It's not relative. It Ex doesn't relate. Exactly. So, so we need to know. We need to know that AWPs actually move with market rates. They could be ten times, a hundred times too high. As long as they're moving together, then you can actually do the math and figure out if you're getting a good deal. Well, it turns out that the third truth is that AWP does not track with changes in market price. So we're going to look at a couple different drugs here. Uh, this is aripiprazole, so it's generic, Abilify, one of the most heavily uh, prescribed mental health drugs here in the state of Ohio and nationwide. What you're looking at here, each individual line is a different national drug code. So that's like basically a unique identifier for drugs, but they're all the same drug at the end of the day. Maybe a different manufacturer, uh, different package size, so a 30 count versus a 90 count. Um, the scale on the left, sorry for the scale, but it's all about between $32 and $32.10 per pill. And you can see that what I want you to take away from this is that the price has not changed. Going back to the beginning of 2016, they set the AWP where it was. It's still there. Um, which could be okay if the price of the drug hadn't actually changed, but in this case, the NADAC, again, our acquisition cost is down 90% over the same time frame. So you may have been getting a good deal back in 2016. Very, very different story now in 2018. Another example, esimeprazole. This is generic Nexium. Same exact story. The vast majority of these what are called national drug codes, these NDCs, so the versions of this drug, are priced anywhere between $8.50 and $9 per pill. On the AWP. On the AWP. Mm -hmm. yeah, what, what we're looking at here is always AWP, and they have not changed. It's so if I'm an lines. employer and I'm, and I'm <laughs> reading like the Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. and I'm hearing about all these generic um, drops in, in, in price, yes. I'm reading that in the news, but it is very unlikely that I'm experiencing any of that financial. That's a, so it's a great point to, to reinforce. Yes, uh, NADAC or some sort of live competitive benchmark is what you're hearing about when you're reading that. Mm -hmm. that, that that's the, the competitive price of this drug. Right. And you know, you'll, you may have an Indian manufacturer, a Chinese manufacturer, just tremendous amount of competition that comes to, to market and the price just craters. Like we've seen drops of 90% that almost overnight. AWP is our parallel universe benchmark, which we are mm -hmm. using in our current universe for prescription drugs. This doesn't need to change. The manufacturer sets that wherever they want and it could stay there forever, as we're seeing on these slides. So in this case, again, no change with generic Nexium. NADAC is down 81% over that same time mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Let's go for another one. Azetamibe generic, uh, Zetia cholesterol medication. So you have one manufacturer that for some reason has set their price very, very low mm -hmm. at, at $2, but the others are at $10 to $12 and so on and so forth. Um, 
That one's down 97% just over the last year. And then the last one, we have our one uh, good actor here. So <laughs> uh, one of the examples here on this chart, this is ketiapine, which is a generic Seroquel, which is another mental health drug that's uh, heavily prescribed. Um, one of the manufacturers actually did bring their AWP down a lot. But in this warped world that we live in, that's actually not a really good thing for them, right? I mean, ultimately the manufacturer produces the drug, but if the PBM is getting paid a percentage of that list price, which right. they are in this world, then you want that price to be as high as possible in order to get coverage for your drug. So just the incentives are all out mm -hmm. of whack. So within what this. happens is someone who's behaving appropriately with their price, they you need to penalize for that. No one purchases mm -hmm. their their product, and eventually they have to bring their price back up to gain market share, or they won't. It's kind of the natural gravity of how the system yeah. of how the, the system is built. Yeah. Like it's unfortunate that's the way that it works, but right. when you really analyze the incentives, you look at someone like that that has dropped their their uh, their AWP from twenty three dollars to fifty cents, and you're like they're just hurting themselves by doing that. Right. Unfortunately, nothing about no? this operates like a free market for no. consumers. It's, no, it's just the opposite. Yeah. So everybody else left it at $22, though, per pill, and this NADAC is down 95%. So I've given you several examples of how we can't trust this AWP benchmark, right? So what if you think, so I'm looking at this line that, yep. across uh, the top of the page. If that's what we were charged for fuel, gallon of gasoline, <laughs> and it never changed. But on the signs, we would see, like, actually the fluctuation of fuel yeah, over time. That's, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That but makes we get sense to look at the price, mm -hmm. but we always have to pay this price. Fixed yeah. at the pump. It, it's just, yeah. it's a hot mess. It's a, that's a really good way of putting it. I, I wish we had that much transparency. So, maybe Well, and the, and the fact of the matter, too, what's really important is the fact we're paying for this. Mm-hmm. If you're a taxpayer, you're paying for it. One way or another. If you're an employer yep. and, and pay for health care, you're paying for it. If mm -hmm. you're an employee mm -hmm. and you're paying a health care contribution, you're paying for this hot mess. Yeah, and if your deductible is really high, you're directly paying for it depending Damn. on what you're taking. Yeah. Right. So you're subjected to these high mm -hmm. list prices. So let's apply all three truths um, to, to, to just kind of bring this all together. So we already, we already went through all the math. We're going to go through the math again. In this case, it's been a bumper harvest. So everything that's on here, hopefully I did that, that's related to any sort of kind of you know, commodity price. <laughs> um, the prices have come down. Those, those are all the green numbers. And so now when you add up the entire grocery cart, same exact stuff, the next year it costs $40.19, which is a 17% savings. This is fantastic. Incidentally, that's kind of what the generic deflation was within 2017, mm -hmm. 17, 20%, depending on your mix. So what happens over on the side, uh, on this side, as far as what you actually paid? Nothing happens. Because if the AWPs are not going down to reflect that it's been a, ba a bumper harvest, you're still paying $76 right. because you're still paying, paying based on AWP. Now, maybe to get, get a little bit deeper, maybe you know about this a little bit and you negotiate a better contract with your, with your PBM that gets you 81% or 82%. It, it doesn't fix the underlying nature mm -hmm. that the benchmark is broken, though. But in this case, if you're still paying to getting that 80% discount, there's no change in what you paid. So you pay 76 now, your grocer pay, uh, gets 40.19, and the, and the grocery benefit manager gets 35.81. Large, large slice of that transaction. Right. So to just sum this all up, in my view, the root cause of the problem is, are these three truths. So that the price of drugs are set based on average wholesale price, or AWP, still. And, and I challenge you uh, to go out and just Google average wholesale price and put like 1980, 1990, 2000, whatever. Um, this has been a controversial benchmark for decades yes. now. Mm -hmm. Decades, and yet, yet we're still using it. Yes, and that <laughs> was lawsuits, the thing that, everything about that this. I find so interesting is the information isn't new. I mean, it's no. new in the news, it's new in the business world, it's really gotten a lot of attention because of things like this. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's not new. No. No, it's, it's just been a really uh, challenging nut to crack, and maybe because it's been so hard to explain, I don't know. Um, so AWP also has no relationship to market price for drugs, truth number two. And AWP does not track with changes in market price over time. So combine that with the fact that there are two separate contracts that the PBM signing, one with your grocer slash you know, pharmacy, and the other one, um, I'm sorry, you know, grocer pharmacy, and the other one with the actual payer, 
So when that PBM charges the employer a discount off AWP and then pays the pharmacy based on the market price, the difference between those two just naturally becomes the spread. Right. This is what in the Wall Street world when I was there we called an arbitrage. Right. <laughs> right. Um, I personally don't believe that this complexity is in the best interest of just about anyone um, except the, the market participants. Uh, for the employer, it shifts the information and the power to the PBM, so you got to do a lot of math to know if you're getting a, a good deal and have a really accurate crystal ball. Uh, and then the patient, it creates warped incentives and unintended consequences. So, um, you know, there's there's all sorts of examples that we can go into, but I know we're, we're limited with time today. But uh, where you have uh, different statins that are priced differently with very different AWPs, and the, the supply chain has the incentive mm -hmm. to push the higher cost one to you. If you're in a high deductible, you may get that one, and there's not enough education out there for you to know that you should be challenging your doctor to ask them, is this one really worth three, four, five right. times? The, am I going to get well, that benefit from it? Because you got a it? coupon, mm -hmm. and it's not costing you anything, perhaps. Oh. Or, or, I mean, but the incentive's tied to that, too, yeah. for the patient. Yeah. That's How much time do we have? Podcast. Can we talk about that? That's, that's, that's a separate topic. But yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't want to go into that right now. <laughs> I'm happy to, though. Um, the, the last point that I want to make is that I am not inherently anti-PBM at all. Um, there are several functions that they provide, most of them that they provide, that are absolutely vital to, to a, a well-functioning marketplace. Mm -hmm. Prior authorization, step therapy, formulary management, they're really, they, they're the checks and balances with, within the whole supply chain. And so they can be vital, but when employed in the, uh, well, mm -hmm. I mean, sorry, when performed in the employer's best interest. And that's just the question, is are these consistently always being performed in the employer's best interest? And that, that's just the question that we just really need to be asking. Yeah, I think it's interesting too. I mean, one is who is their customer? Mm -hmm. and, and I agree. I mean, as far as they are necessary. Yeah. And um, left leave people to their own devices, unfortunately. Yeah. And they will, they will create something like we're looking at right now. Yeah. Uh, and um, so it, if you're listening or if you're watching, one of the things is, gosh, this is really confusing. Or um, maybe, maybe I stopped listening 10 minutes ago. <laughs> or whatever the reason. The, the, the point of the matter is the fact this is costing us a lot of money. Yeah. Right. Our, our, our workforce as employers, our employees as taxpayers, uh, folks that are on Medicaid. And by golly, we haven't even talked to the f uh, about the folks that are on Medicare Part D. Yeah. Because it's the same hot mess. It's worth it. Yeah, it's really important to understand. So we're trying to take one small piece of this over time and come, come to you with one small piece each time Eric joins yep. us back again. And we will invite you back. You're oh. invited back to the party. <laughs> you didn't leave the party. We actually I didn't clear the room this here. time. No. Um, <laughs> we paid attention. Yeah, and we hope this helps Appreciate you it. begin to think about this in a different way. Um, we're going to continue to look for you know what what can be done about this yeah. and, and what what you can do about this. But understanding it is where it starts. Um, and so we appreciate you coming Thank in you. today and talking us through. And I hope that I do not have a grocery benefit manager <laughs> in the future. Um, I do not want that as a part of my shopping life. Um, so. Yeah, I think the, the last thing I want to leave it with is that there's really nothing inherently wrong with this. Um, you know, if you're going in with eyes open and you want to go in as an employer to a spread pricing model and it works for you and you've done the math, you should be able to do that. Right. I mean, it, it's a free country and, and there's choice. nothing inherently wrong. Uh, there just needs to be other options. There needs to be better education, in my mind, out there. So, so we know what we're signing up for. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So, well, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you're interested in more information, you can email Scott at HealthierBirthdays.com. Or, or Ann at HealthierBirthdays.com. And join us next time on Side Effects. We'll bring Eric back real soon. Have an amazing day. Thank you. Thanks for listening and opening your mind. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach us at Scott at HealthierBirthdays.com. Or Ann at HealthierBirthdays.com. We hope you'll join us next time on, on Side, Side Effects. Effects.